Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Chaz Christopher, I'm so glad you're here. Today, we're gonna talk about the history of Christmas. So sit back, relax, and let's get our Christmas on. Deck the halls with boughs of holly, fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la. Christmas's origins. So the winter solstice happens right around Christmas time, and that's no coincidence. Humans have been celebrating the winter solstice going all the way back to the agriculture revolution. It was significant in the sense that during this time of year, we have the shortest days. After the winter solstice, the days begin getting longer and longer, and then eventually spring comes and we're able to have crops again, and life and everything is back to normal. In the area around what is now Scandinavia, those people celebrated a holiday called Yule. And what happened was the men and boys of that area would go out and get a great big log, bring it in their house, put it on their fire, and the whole time that log burned, which was about 12 days, they would drink, eat, and be merry. They already had a surplus of meat because they usually slaughtered their cattle leading into winter so that they didn't have to worry about feeding them during that whole time when there wasn't much food to be around. People of Germany around this time also celebrated something similar. They had a god named Odin, and they believed that Odin would fly over on his flying horse, look down at them, and see who's been, as we would say now, naughty or nice. If you were bad, bad things were gonna come, and if you were good, you would prosper. It is also rumored that kids would leave out their shoes for Odin's horse and they would put different fruits and vegetables in it and if the horse was happy they would get left toys. We have no idea if this is true and there's some people that say that this is where stockings came from but it's mostly agreed upon that stockings came from another oral transmission that happened where there was these three young girls that had recently lost their mom. Their dad was in town and St. Nicholas who usually passed through these towns to bring kids toys and joy, overheard this man saying that his wife had died and he thought his children were never going to get married because they didn't have any money. So later that night, St. Nicholas returns, drops some gold down the chimney, and it just happens to land in their stockings that they had hung over the fireplace to get dry from the snow or whatever else had been on it that day. They weren't hung there originally from St. Nicholas, but the next morning the girls woke up, they found gold in their stockings, and the fable goes that they lived happily ever after, got married, everything was good. Now, that kind of jumps ahead to today's Santa. We're gonna have to go through a whole journey to get to how we got to today's Santa. But first, let's travel down south to the Roman Empire. So the Roman Empire celebrated what is called Saturnalia, which was after the god Saturn, who was their agriculture god. Kind of makes sense going back to what I said about the agriculture revolution. The winter solstice is so significant in this that the Romans believed you had to appease Saturn so that he would give you crops in the springtime. Now, this was a week-long crazy celebration. I mean, like, take Mardi Gras and just amp that up a lot. Slaves became masters. Poor people got to write rules. There was no school. There was no work. Nothing. In the middle of this week actually was December 25th, and on December 25th, the Romans believed this to be the most holy holiday. That's when they celebrated the sun god Mithra's birth. The early church that was forming knew of these holidays, they were involved with these holidays, but they didn't have a birth for Jesus. Nobody knew when Jesus' birth was. And honestly, at that time, to celebrate the birth of a god like Jesus in the Jewish culture would not have been something that was done. If Jesus was alive and later found out that his birthday became a holiday, that would be something that would actually be very foreign to him and most likely, according to most historians, believe that he would be very disappointed in it because that was not his life's work. The church founders didn't necessarily care about this because they wanted a holiday for their God and they figured that the best day they could do this was December 25th because it was already the sun God's birthday and easy to incorporate the two as the Roman Empire moved to Christianity. So that's exactly what happened. Now, it's not like all the people in Rome just all of a sudden were like, yes, Christmas, which the church called the Feast of the Nativity. They obviously kept doing the same traditions they had been doing for many, many years before. And the church was okay with this because now it was done under a Christian holiday. And this went all the way through the Middle Ages. I mean, in 1422, it is reported that Pope Paul actually allowed 
the Roman citizens to fatten up Jewish people and make them race naked through the street. That type of stuff continued until the 19th century where it's recorded that rabbis who were living in the ghettos at that time were forced to dress up in clown-like outfits, march through the street where stuff was thrown at them so much so that some of them died from the stuff actually hitting them. The crazy festivities of Saturnalia they were so wild and out of hand that finally in the 17th century, Oliver Cromwell put an end to Christmas. No more of those celebrations. What was happening at that time was a poor person could be crowned the Duke of Mischief. They would go through the city knocking on the wealthiest people's doors, asking for their best food, their best wine, and if they did not give it, they would terrorize them and cause mischief. Talk about some crazy caroling. I open my door and people sing. I mean, that never happens, but that's so much nicer than you open your door and it's like, hey, give me your best food, give me your wine, otherwise I'm gonna terrorize you. That's what was happening. <laughs> so Oliver Cromwell was like, enough is enough. It wasn't until 1670 when King Charles took back over the throne and reinstated Christmas. Now, across the ocean, 17th century America did not celebrate Christmas because these were Puritans and pilgrims that definitely wanted nothing to do with that heathen holiday that were coming to America. There's one exception, which is Jamestown. Jamestown does have a recorded Christmas celebration and in 1601 is credited for creating the first ever eggnog. Who would have thought? In 1659 to 1681, Boston actually made Christmas celebrations illegal. If you were caught celebrating, you were fined. 18th century America still wasn't really celebrating Christmas, so much so that the famous Washington crossing the Delaware happened on Christmas Day. Nobody at that time thought this was a big deal because most people didn't celebrate Christmas. In 1809, Washington Irving, who was living here in New York City, every day when he would walk about, and especially during what we now have as the Christmas time season, he would see the social classes clash. So much so that these riots actually caused New York City to create a police force. They gotten so out of hand and Oliver thought, I should put out some literature that helps bring people together, that makes this time of the year a warm season that is all about giving. He's also credited for giving Santa his white beard and white hair. Later in 1822, was the night before Christmas comes out, and he actually pulls a lot from Washington Irving's writing about St. Nicholas to put into his own poem. Most of what we have as Santa Claus today comes from that poem. So that's where we see the stockings hung. But Christmas at this point in time still is not a national holiday. Everybody still works on it. Congress still meets on it. It's only celebrated if you celebrate it in the comfort of your own home. That's about it. In 1840, Prince Albert actually brought Queen Victoria a Christmas tree. Again, like I said, this was a German tradition. When they started migrating to America in 1820, actually brought that tradition with them. But again, it stayed in their community and it wasn't necessarily decorating it like we do. But when Queen Victoria got it, she wanted to decorate it, put presents on it, put candles on it, and they actually photographed it. That picture wasn't printed until eight years later in a prominent London newspaper. Upon Americans and Europeans seeing that, it became high fashion to have a decorated Christmas tree in your house. That's the birth of the modern Christmas tree. In 1843, an Englishman actually created the first greeting card. It was so cheap to print and mail off that they actually made a thousand of them and they were such a success that the next year they made more and more and more to what we have today. In 1863, a famous cartoonist is credited with actually creating the first visual print of Santa Claus. He put him in his cartoons, he gave him the red outfit, the red suit, and then many years later when the Coca-Cola company actually starts adding Santa into their marketing which really puts Santa in the home of many Americans and makes him the phenomenon that he is today. July 26th of 1870, under Ulysses S. Grant's presidency, Christmas becomes a national holiday in America. This is when Christmas actually starts taking its roots. At that time, we had, you know, different things from Washington Irving to was night before Christmas, the cartoon is putting Santa out. Queen Victoria with the Christmas tree, but there was still no true American identity for Christmas. So at this point in time, Americans start looking to the immigrants of the time to see what cultures and traditions did they bring over from their native lands, and those start getting incorporated to the Christmas we know today. In 1939, this is when Rudolph came about, and in the 1950s, most of our Christmas carols, most of our Christmas dishes, all of these things that we know today and we celebrate today, that's when they came about. 
Before this, in the 1800s, children weren't looked at as children are today. The 1800s really were this transformation process of taking children out of the factories and allowing them to actually become kids. Parents wanted to give their children gifts, but didn't want to look like they were spoiling them. So Christmas allowed them to give them gifts without the appearance of spoiling them. Now, fast forward to the 1950s, this is when Christmas and capitalism emerged. The major sales like we have today, the rush out to get all these Christmas presents, all the commercials, all the propaganda that's out there, that all took place in the 1950s and was what really shaped today's Christmas. So Christmas doesn't always have this great significant meaning to all peoples of the world, and it really barely has anything to do with Jesus. But yet, somehow there has become in modern times a war on Christmas, and if you don't say Merry Christmas to me, you're not American, this and this. And I always think, wow, you really have no idea what Christmas is, do you? Or how Christmas got started. If you are of the Christian faith and you celebrate Christmas as Jesus' birthday, that's great. Other people celebrate it for an array of things as well. It's not actually just celebrated for that one reason, because we don't know when Jesus was born. Nobody knows that. The church of the time decided to put that on the date of the sun god because it merged perfectly well together, and it is what we have today. Where our true Christmas actually came from was people like Washington Irving who wanted to get Americans to understand that it is a beautiful thing to come together and help the people who are less fortunate than ourselves. That's the true meaning of the Christmas season, and that's what we should all be doing. So with that being said, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below if you learned anything new or if you know something about Christmas that I did not mention. And most importantly, you do you, I'll do me, and I'll see you next Friday. We now are gay apparel. Fa la 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 la.